Walker here. So great to see you. I'm so happy to be doing this particular workout with you today. It is part three of my posterior chain series. And as you know, we do posterior chain workouts and add posterior chain movements into a lot of the workouts that I teach to really help you with your posture and stability. It's very, very important to counterbalance a lot of your day-to-day forward body movements that activate specific key muscles in the front side of your body that do medial rotation, forward movement, uh, to really balance them out and stabilize you so you can be in a tall, upright posture by doing back body movements with mindfulness. So it's really easy to do a lot of front body exercises when you're working out and not realize that that's kind of compounding on top of your day-to-day -day activities and you can end up with forward shoulder posture, forward head posture, uh, different sort of postural syndromes that can over time really give you pain, uh, can lead to poor movement patterns. And so we really want to do mindful posterior chain movements and make sure that we're doing workout movements in our workouts in general that really help you activate and strengthen the back side of your body, which is also really fun from an aesthetic perspective too, because I like having a strong set of glutes and strong legs and a beautiful strong back. So these are all things that we're going to be working on today. So I'm so glad you're here. A couple of props that I would recommend you have for this workout. Um, some water bottles or weights are great. Uh, and of course, just some room to move. A puppy sleeping in a basket is optional. <laughs> and uh, I am going to be, as an optional prop today, using one of my little mini bands. I'll put a link to this. Uh, we're only using it for one move. Don't feel bad if you don't have it. You still get plenty out of it, but it's a great thing to have for workouts in the gym or at home, and I absolutely love it. So I'll show you how to use it today in one of our moves. And that's pretty much it. So we're actually gonna start right down here on the mat. So why don't you go ahead and join me? And we're gonna come right into a little glute activation series that also really sculpts and tones the booty and really activates these muscles and gets right into them. So we're gonna come right down onto our elbows in a sort of uh, low tabletop position. And I'm just gonna extend my left leg out behind me. I'm gonna really point my toe. And we're just gonna go ahead and start with some simple leg lifts. Now, what I want you to really be mindful of here is that your torso is nice and stable, that you're not kind of swinging your body around as you do this, because when you do that, you're not actually isolating those glute muscles nearly as much. So let's make sure that we have a nice strong stable core and a supported base for these last two, last one. Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and bend the knee and you're gonna do a kick up towards the ceiling. So you're gonna do a pointed toe, kick up. So it's just a lift and a kick. Knee comes down, knee comes up. Lift and kick, lift, kick. Really simple, really effective. Now, a lot of the times we skip doing moves like this, either because we just don't have time or because we're just like, that looks too easy. I'm just not going to do that. But you, you actually don't realize these moves are so incredibly effective, especially when you do them consistently. I would do a dedicated posterior chain workout weekly. Uh, if you're thinking about that as something that can really help you, you can also use moves like this just to warm up for other workouts you're doing. Oh my gosh, feeling the burn. We're going to mix it up. I'm going to come up onto my hands. And I'm just going to drop my right elbow down and we're going to do a 45 degree angle. So we're just going to lift the leg out and to the side, 45 degrees, just feeling that burn. Good job. It's not too many here. You're just going to really get into that hip and into those glutes. Beautiful job. Last three, two, last one. Now we're going to add a little bit of core to it. So we're going to extend our arm out, extend the leg up and then crunch it briefly under the body. Extend the leg out, crunch. And you can put your hand down like I am in between each one. You don't have to go into the full extended out and trying to balance on two points unless you want to. If you're feeling super warm right now and ready to balance and challenge yourself, you can do that. I'm just really wanting you to work on activating, just lifting and pointing that toe up towards the ceiling. Last two, last one, little crunch and we're gonna switch sides, you did awesome. All right, come back down onto your elbows. Let's go ahead and straighten out the right leg, point the toe, engage the core, and we're just really isolating the glute max right now. Great job, come on. Lift and lower, lift 
and lower. Just point the toe and lift up. And don't let your torso move around. Don't let your lower back try to get involved. It's a really easy compensating pattern that we want to avoid. So we just really want to isolate those glutes. Last five, four, three, two, last one. We're going to bend the knee now and we're going to send our pointed toe up towards the ceiling. Just really get into more of the glutes, feeling the burn. And you might be feeling a little burn in your shoulders because you've been on your forearms for a little while. Enjoy that, embrace that. We're gonna get into our upper body next. Here we go. Last five, four, three, oh, two, last one. Great job. Let's go ahead and come on up. This time left elbow stays down. We're gonna extend our right leg out 45 degrees and we're just gonna lift and lower. Just really working on that 45 degree angle now. Just lifting and lowering. So good. This is what you're here for. <laughs> You guys feeling the burn? I know I am. Oh my gosh. Good job. Last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Last series. Come on up to tabletop now. And we're going to go ahead and kick that leg up and then add a little crunch below our body. Just a little extra. A little extra. And feel free to do the arm extension with the crunch. If you're feeling up for it, also fine to put the hand down to stabilize yourself. Just really focus on that booty lift that you've got going on right now. So good. This is such, such a great activation series for your glutes. I love it. Great job. Last three, two, last one. Woo! Felt that. Okay, you rocked that. Now, we're gonna come up and do a move called pull-aparts. Now, if you've gone to the gym and used the cable machine or the ropes, you've done something really similar uh, with a face pull. Uh, face pulls are in YMS, for example. Um, this is a great move to do if you're at home, have lighter weights, or you have a water bottle handy. This is just a great move to do to really work that upper mid-back that sometimes is really hard to target. So, we're gonna stand tall. We're gonna bring our weighted objects up safely in front of us sort of like out at this angle in front of you. Hold your core in nice and strong. You can separate your feet slightly. And they're just gonna pull your elbows back. Pull the elbows back. Great job, come on. Hold your core in nice and strong here and get right into this with me. Just pull them back. Really squeeze your elbows back. That's what's really gonna get you the best result here. Really working those. And if you don't have any weights at all or nothing, you're still probably gonna feel this. These are not muscles that are worked every day unless you're mindfully doing moves like this. So just be here with me. Just get these done. Last five, last four, last three, last two, last, whew, last one. Awesome work. You did great. Okay, we're going to move on to our third move in this first superset. And for this one, I'm just going to grab a slightly heavier weight. We're going to be doing a squat combo now. And this is uh, probably my least favorite move in the entire sequence we're doing today because it's really challenging. And that's really good. So it's really gonna challenge your body. So we're gonna start out with a wide stance. So your feet are gonna be out wider than your mat, generally. And go ahead and see how far down you can come. Can you come into this deep squat? And if not, that is a-okay. I want you to start wherever you are. You can hold on to your upright dumbbell hold on to the top of your water bottle. What I want you to do is to stand in a forward fold with your hands at the top or the base of your weighted object. Just sort of see where you're at and then you're just going to drop your butt down and you're going to press it back up into the sky. Okay? It's called a froggy squat. It's really not fun after a while and it's really effective. Okay? You're really getting deeply into those glutes, those hamstrings. Your, your whole legs are working here. Last one. Now what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna safely bend our knees, we're gonna pick up our weighted object and we're gonna come up holding our weighted object in what's called a goblet sort of uh, stance. So normally if you have a kettlebell, you hold it like this. So I'm just gonna hold my weighted object just below my chin and I'm gonna step out into my wide stance and I'm gonna go ahead and do a, glute, uh, a sumo glute squat. So here we go. Goblet squat, down, press up, down, press up, Keep your chest upright each time you squat. 
squat down, you're going to want to make sure your abs kind of turn on and come in towards your belly button. Good. Last two. Last one. You got the hang of this now, so we're going to squat it down. We're going to set that weighted object down. We're going to hinge forward at the hips. Hands can either be up here or lower down. And you're just going to squat down as far as you can go to make this really challenging for yourself. We're going to try to add another one on here. So good. Breathe. Keep that core in nice and tight. Last one. Drop the hips. Grab the weighted object. Come on up. Hold the weighted object under your chin. And drop it down. Press it up. Belly button comes in and up. Press it up. I want to see your chest stay upright here. That's how you really activate your back body. And a great thing to do, and I think we've done this in a couple of the posterior chain previous videos, is I have you really working on tapping your butt down to a chair, couch, or low bench so you can really proprioceptively find out where your body needs to be to really activate your hamstrings and glutes as you come up from the squat. Last one, and set it down. We're going to do this one more time. Hands down, butt down, lift, and lower. And you see how what I did there is I pitched my weight a little bit too far forward onto my toes, and that's a great thing. I'm glad it happened because it's really natural to do that. What you want to do here is try to make sure you keep your weight back in your heels. That's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck here. Last five. Let's challenge ourselves. Come on, warriors. We can do this. Four, three, and our thighs are burning. Two, last one, and final squat to grab the weight. Come on up, hold it under your chin, and we're going to add one last set of squats, goblet squats. So elbows are going to come in close, and we're going to squat it down, belly button in and up, and drive up. Squeeze those glutes. Down, and drive up. Down, drive up. So good. Down, up. Down, up. Really be mindful of that form. Squeeze your buns on the way up. Make this work for you. Make sure those knees are tracking in line with the toes. Keep your weight back. I know it's a lot to remember. That's why I say the cues over and over. If you're in Rock Your Life with me, you're like a pro at this point. I see people just have amazing results when it comes to getting their alignment back on track. It's so important. So good. Last one. You did awesome. Okay, we're going to round this series out with one final set of those pull aparts uh, because those are really important. We want to add one more little set of those in. I might even add a bonus set of them in to our second sort of series. So let's go ahead and pull our shoulders back. Stand with intention. Stand tall. We're going to bring those weighted objects or water bottles up in front of us out at an angle. Watch your core. You, when you're holding a weight up here, sometimes the tendency is to arch your back. Don't let that happen. Give a little tuck to your pelvis, engage those abs, and now drive your shoulders back. Yeah. Drive your elbows back. Your shoulders are going to come back too. But you're mostly driving back with your elbows. So you're going to really feel that working the back, your upper back, your back side body. Don't lose that core engagement. You've got this. So good. I'm really feeling it. Keep your elbows up high. Don't let them drop down to your sides. You've got this. Last three, last two, last one. Woo. Awesome. Great job. Okay, now we're going to bring it down to the mat. And this is a great time if you have a mini band to go ahead and grab it. It's not required. You can still do the move that we're going to do, which is a glute bridge, without it. I'll tell you the benefit when you have a band around your outer thighs. When you do the glute bridge, I can't talk, uh, you will actually just get a little bit more side booty work. It'll be a little bit more challenging, and it helps you stabilize your hips and knees in a nice aligned way that's just really good for you proprioceptively or in balance, letting your body know where it should be in space. So I'm just going to roll down onto my mat, and like I said, you, you, you know, if you don't have the band, you just go ahead and put your hands between your knees and just press your thighs to, towards each other, or just be mindful of that stability, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we have a big fat blueberry right below the middle of our lower back, and we're just going to press the blueberry down without squashing, okay? And that's going to help us engage our abs. So every time you get ready to do a bridge lift, I want you to find the blueberry, I want you to press it down, and then I want you to lift. 
And what this is doing is the very same thing we started with when we were in that on our elbows position, and I asked you not to let your back sway around too much. What this little blueberry position is, is we're activating our core here and holding it nice and stable before we lift up. And what this does is it allows you to fully engage your glutes, and you're not gonna be using other muscles to compensate in, in ways that you shouldn't be. So um, it's fine to do a bridge lift like this with your back arched, but you're just not gonna get quite as much glute activation what, as, as you would. So I want you to go ahead and test that. Go ahead and see if you feel it more in your buns when you do it with the little activation. And I'm just gently pressing out against the band here. Nice job. Lift, lower down, lift, lower down. Now a fun variation we're going to try next is we're going to bring our feet in close together, but we're going to keep our knees apart. So we're going to lift up and we're going to do one, two, Three. And this works just fine without any band, but as you can see, it's additionally challenging for me with the band. So come down, come up, lift, two, and three, and down, find my blueberry, lift, one, two, and three. Great job, lower down. Again, we're gonna lift and extend our legs out. Great job. Okay, are you feeling this in your glutes yet? What are you thinking? You feeling pretty uh, warmed up in the buns or what? No, I am. Okay, we're gonna take that activation that we just did and bring it into one of my favorite moves for the posterior chain of all time, which is of course the deadlift. Now we're gonna do some fun things with the deadlift. So go ahead and grab your water bottles or weights and we're gonna work on our form for our deadlift. The deadlift's great because it works your lower back, your glutes and hamstrings, and it's just such a great move, and it's important to get the form right. So if you've done this before, great job. Maybe just follow along and practice with me as you get sort of warmed up and find your space. So we're gonna stand, we're gonna hold our weighted objects. If you had a barbell, it would be right in front of you. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna hinge your hips back. And as you do that, it's not really as nat, if you were just to like do this without any control, the weights would just sort of like come in front of me. What I'm gonna do is mindfully bring them close to my shins as my, hinge, my, my hips hinges, hinges back, again, I'm trying to talk. <laughs> so hips go back, weights stay in. I'm at about a 90 degree bend. You don't wanna go any farther than that. I'm not rounding my back here. I've got a nice flat back. And then I'm gonna power up with my glutes to really bring myself out of that and really get the maximum amount of benefit for my body. Now each time I hinge forward, we're gonna be making sure that our abs are engaged. So the belly button is gonna come in and up. So I wanted to try that part now. So you know that your weighted objects need to be in close to your shins. You're bending forward to 90 degrees. Your belly button comes in and up just when you hinge forward, which really helps to stabilize a very important muscle called your transverse abdominals, which are like your body's natural weight belt and they help keep your pelvis supported and stable. And this is really important when you go up in weight, when you're doing a heavier weighted deadlift. Okay, let's take a quick break. Shake it out. <laughs> Good job. Now we're gonna build on this. So you're gonna do a deadlift and then we're gonna step back to reverse lunge. So let's go ahead and practice the reverse lunge. So we're upright and we're just gonna step it back and we're gonna step it forward. Let's try that on the other leg. Step back, step forward. I love the reverse lunge because it seems, just seems easier to keep my torso up as I step backwards. And that's what you really want in any lunge position. This is a great way to strengthen your lunge, and you just want to make sure that your knees are lined up with your toes nice and parallel behind you, and that your knee in the front is not pitched forward over your front toe, just a little bit too much pressure, especially when you have weighted object, okay? So back and forward. Now we're gonna put it together, so let's do this. We're gonna go ahead, find our balance point, engage our core, engage our shoulders. We're gonna hinge forward, we're going to engage those abs, we're going to power drive it up, and we're going to do one step back, two step backs. Great job. Ready for more? Here we go. Hinge forward, power pop it up. Back, back. Awesome work. This is the work you're doing. Hinge forward, up, back, and back. Great work. Come on. Got a few more of these to do. Hinge, power pop up, back, and back. So good. Hinge, pop, back, and back. Really nice. You should
should be feeling this. Great move to get your hamstrings, your lower back, your booty, of course. Reset each time. You don't need to rush these. And back, and back. I had to find my center point again. Last one. Here we go. Reset. Hinge it forward. Yeah. Power drive up. Step back. Last step back. And you rocked that. Let's do one final set of the pull apart move because I just love activating that upper back. So grab your weighted objects or water bottles. We're going to bring them up overhead and we're just going to drive back. Drive back. <sighs> Driving back. Beautiful. Good. Last eight. Seven. Six. And five. You got this. You can do it. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Woo! So good, Rockstar. Really, really nice job. Uh, great for you if you want to go back and do the workout a second time. You can replay this video, of course. And be sure to check out the other two workouts in the posterior chain series. And for a comprehensive, complete workout program that will not only help stabilize your posture, balance your body, give you an amazing cardiovascular burn that will help you drop excess body fat, and an amazing resistance training, it's body sculpting workout that will really give you the shape that you're looking for, I recommend that you take my Fit Body Quiz and find out which of my workout programs will really suit you the most. I'm really, really excited to uh, have you here for these workouts with me. It's really just such a pleasure to get to teach and to spend time with you and to get to sweat with you. That's what it's all about. So be sure to take my Fit Body Quiz, find a workout program that you can follow so that you really do have a comprehensive full body workout program that really does give you the results that you're looking for and just gives you the energy that you need, makes you feel awesome without burning out and without getting exhausted or repeating too many things, not having the right proper rest and really, you know, none of us really like that. We've all done programs that didn't work for us. We've all just tried to piece things together randomly and that doesn't always work for very long either. So use one of my workout programs. I've created them all specially for you. They're all workouts that I personally do, teach my inner circle and teach all of my clients and they are awesome. So use my Fit Body Quiz. I'll put it right here for you in the video and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. Leave me a comment down below, let me know where you did this workout from, if you've done the other two posterior chain workouts in this series, and if you're going to. And I'm Betty Rocker. I can't wait to see you here again next time. Mwah. Lots of